Today, we have traveled to London to 3D Print UK to talk with Nick and find out why he's invested in eight HP 3D printers from Matsura. So Nick, 3D Print UK, where did it all start? So uh, starting about 2011 um, with just the main goal was to make stuff. <laughs> um, I didn't have a, a, a concrete direction of what we're going and I don't think much of the industry did either. Uh, by about 2013, manufacture was where I set my heart on. Meanwhile, everyone else was creating these uh, these sort of arty sculptures and the violin and all that kind of stuff. And I was into pictures of bitting, some really boring things. But if you're into manufacturing and understand about minimum order values and tooling costs and all that kind of stuff and realize what the benefits of additive are, that is exciting, uh, no matter how boring a, <laughs> a fixture of fitting may be. Um, I mean, primarily we supply engineering firms, generally SME areas, uh, and these customers are the kind of people who produce uh, two to 300, up to a thousand products a year. Um, but in that area, that is where it is not viable to tool up injection molding machines for uh, the production of their individual components. So what we do is we bridge this gap where previously you couldn't viably manufacture a product. Now, without the tooling costs and the, the relatively low cost of additive, you now have the ability to produce these products within a price that you can sell them for. Got a project in the Friday night at about five o'clock, and I'd already made all the builds, uh, and they were like, oh, we need 200 clips uh, about that big, and we need, we need it for early next week. And I was like, ah, oh, see if I can fit that in the build. Nested them all in around the already made build, and. You know, the customer said, you know, how much is that going to be? Expecting to be a sort of £10 a clip. And I was like, well, I've already made the build. Pound? Uh, for per clip, that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they're like, oh, wow, brilliant. And we printed them over the weekend, got them shipped out on Monday, uh, arrived on Tuesday. And that customer then became <laughs> a very regular customer. I thought, you know what? Th this, is, this is much more end-use application than the industry thinks it is. And bearing in mind, this is 2013, 2014, when people thought it just made trinkets and knickknacks and stuff like that. So, yeah, we, uh, we then literally flip the business model on its head rather than trying to charge like high value projects in low volumes we tried to do low value products in high volumes um, so yeah we changed our pricing we brought our minimum part cost down to 50p it used to be 10 pounds so it was 20 times cheaper than it used to be and then we had this flow and flow of orders coming in uh, and then we realized like this is production and from that moment everything changed now as you said you've got quite a few HP machines from Matsura. So why did you take the decision to go with this type of 3D printer? So we initially started with SLS. Uh, we built up uh, quite a few SLS machines and we had very frequent requests from our customers saying that they were interested in HP parts and they were using other service providers for this. We had initially tested the very first model of the HP 42 series. We didn't feel it quite stacked up to what we could produce on the SLS machines. So we waited and we waited until 2020 when they released the 52 series. 52 series ticked all the boxes that the 42 series didn't for us. So with all these machines you bought from Matsura, what's the service and support been like from actually Matsura? Matsura have been fantastic. Um, so in the early days we had quite a few problems when we were launching, so teething issues, etc. But Matsura really took us under their wing. Uh, they helped us with our excess capacity that we weren't able to fulfill if we had a machine down. We don't have that problem so much anymore because we've got a large number of machines. One machine down out of eight doesn't make too much of a difference, but when you had one out, one down, they stepped in, they helped us out. They would be there for us if we had any queries, any mechanical issues, any software issues, they were great. And what types of parts are you doing on these machines and, and the quantity you can print in say one go? There is no specific type of part that we make. Uh, if you were to narrow it down, I would say that we do medium to low volume in terms of mass manufacture terms, but very high volume for 3D printing terms. Cool. So this is the uh, high hundreds, low thousands, up to 10,000. And how many parts can you actually print in one go? Obviously, depending on the size, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously all 3D printers have got different size tables. So, so what very sort of... much a how long is a piece of string thing. Um, <laughs> on average, every night we print between three and a half and 6,000 parts across all of our machines. Though across the HPs uh, is, is about 50% of that. Um, but 
we can fit up to two or three thousand parts on a single HP if they are small parts. So you can get injection mold capacity across these machines. As an industry, I think that more and more products are being manufactured via additive these days. Um, this is a, an area that I think we are only at the tip of the iceberg in terms of growth. And I feel there's a huge, huge future in this.